Hey, this is Steve for ProTechReviewGroup.com and welcome to the second part of our very first tutorial ever. And we are dealing how to correct the fisheye problem that you get from using wide angle lenses um, within video or other editing software. The first part of this tutorial showed you how to correct the problem with After Effects, which I thought worked really well. The second part uh, shows you how to, to correct the problem using Photoshop, which I found through my own trial and error that some uh, video seems to correct, or some you know sections seem to correct really well, and others seem to uh, you know not so much. So let's jump right in. Um, we're going to be working with the outside portion of this video, and yes, I do live on a hill, but no, my hill is not quite that steep. So um, that's the problem we're getting from the fish eye. You can kind of tell that also from up here, and also my house. There is not necessarily a uh, a bent shape like that. Like I said in the last tutorial, I got some problems if my house is bowing that much. So let's jump into Photoshop and see what we can do. Um, a lot of people don't know that Photoshop can work with video, but actually it works with video really well. Um, and there are so many great uh, filters with Photoshop that you can now apply to your video. And the way we do that is, well, you can file import, but you can also just go right to a folder, grab your clip and drag it down right on top of the Photoshop button and let go. And it's gonna bring my footage right in. Now, let me switch modes here so it doesn't get so confusing. If you don't see this timeline panel at the bottom, you're going to need to uh, enable it. And there's two ways I'll show you to do that. By the way, Photoshop calls it the animation uh, panel because you're, you use it for a lot of animations and things. But you can either um, go to this little chevron here and choose motion, and that'll bring that up automatically. Or just click on your window menu and make sure you turn on the animation um, panel right there, animation. So I can scrub through and I'm going to go ahead and find that point outside where my, where my hill and my house are bowed and shouldn't be. Okay, so before we really do much with this, we need to tell Photoshop that this is a smart layer. Now, what does that mean? Well, a couple different things. I had a little trouble grasping the concept at one point, but I saw a really good tutorial, which I will suggest to you on the blog to check out. But the, the tutorial basically explain, explained it like this. When you apply a filter or even a resize, for example, if I, if I apply a resize and shrink something down real small, and then I close my project and I come back later, Photoshop forgot that that file was ever in its original state. It doesn't remember its original state. So if I've changed my mind and I want to revert, then I've got problems because when I blow that file back up, it's rewritten the file as a small file or with filters or whatever, and it pixelates really bad if you're trying to size up or um, it, just, it just forgets its original state. Um, if you tell it that, hey, this is a smart object, Photoshop uh, embeds the information that was originally uh, attached to that clip or to that photo and it remembers what its original state was so you can always revert back okay the other thing that smart layer does apparently is it tells the um, the program that hey this is not just a single frame within this layer this is actually a video made up of multiple frames um, so that we can apply these filters to this video all we need to do is right click on layer, on the layer, and choose convert to smart object. You can also get to that up here in the layer menu. Layer, smart objects, convert to smart object. I'm going to click that, and you can see the little icon down here in the layers palette. That's our smart object icon. So now we know it's a smart object. Okay, so the next part is to start applying our filter. So we're going to go up to filter. And we're going to go lens correction, okay? Click on lens correction. You can also hold ship, uh, shift command R, but I'm just going to click lens correction. And there we go. We're in the lens correction. There's lots of cool um, presets here based on the camera you use. Uh, if you're using a Canon, for example, Canon 5D Mark II, you can choose EOS 5D Mark II. Boom, ready to go. Um, this is CES 5.5, which was released before the 5D Mark III came out, so they don't have that option on here. I'm sure CES 6 has the 5D Mark III option. Um, anyway, we're not doing that, and I used a GoPro, which is not an option. So what we're going to do is go over here to Custom, and we're just going to start uh, messing with this until we correct our problem. So, remove distortion. Let's drag it to the right. 
and already you can see big differences. Now, I told you before that in, in the After Effects tutorial that it was helpful to have a grid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the top of my house for my basis and I'm going to click this checkbox down here that says Show Grid. And I'm just going to use that to straighten up the house until it's straight along that line. It's not going to be perfect because my footage is not lined up. And actually, let's go ahead and line that up right now. If you click this, uh, where is it? There we go. Straighten Tool A. You can actually draw a straight line along this house and it'll automatically orient the picture so that that's my straight line. So, boom. It's rotated my picture. There we go. Now I'm going to try this again and try to use that straight line as my basis. Now it's lined up a little bit better. And I'm liking this right here. No, nope, that's still a little bent, isn't it? Oh, almost, almost. Okay, we're still looking a little fish-eyed. There we go. I think this is looking the best right here. There we go. That looks pretty good. Um, I haven't been able to f to perfectly do this within Photoshop, but but I've seen tutorials online. There's other ones out there to check out. It works really well in some cases. The one I was really having trouble with. Let me let me apply this. Actually, let me cancel this for now. I'll show you where I was having a lot of trouble. Is on the frame I showed you how to do in After Effects right here. I was having a heck of a time getting this wall to getting these walls to straighten out. So this isn't a perfect fix. Um, neither was the one in, in After Effects though. So you'll see what I'm saying. I've got this, you know, the, re the remove distortion up, cranked up pretty high and we're still getting quite a bit of bending and, and fish eyeing in the corners. Um, so anyway, once your filter is set the way you like it and you're happy with it, how do we apply that and make that back into a video? Well, we click File, Export, Render to Video, and once you do that, it gives you your render box where you can choose your your um, file options and your, your codecs and things like that. Not quite as many as you would get in Premiere or After Effects, but still a, a nice choice there. So I'm not going to do that because it takes a little while to do. Um, Photoshop's a little bit slower rendering, but Again, if you didn't know you could work with video in Photoshop, please play around with it. There's lots and lots of cool filters you can do and, and, and things you can apply to your video clips. Um, so that's it. Again, I'm Steve for GoPro, uh, ugh, Steve for ProTech Review. Again, I'm Steve for ProTechReviewGroup.com. Thanks for checking out the video and make sure to check out the site for the detailed list, um, numbered, set up, ready to go, and it tells you exactly how to go through this process uh, in a written format. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching.